Hello ladies and gents, welcome to this tutorial on truncating in Adobe Audition. You may or may not have come across the term truncating before, it's just an industry word for topping and tailing, cutting off the bits before and after a piece of audio that you've recorded, a sample, a take, a clip, I get lots of different words all mean pretty much the same thing. So here are these terms, start understanding what they mean. I'll explain later why it's called truncating, where the word stems from. Let's have a little look first of all how to do it. And I'm going to be using the sample that I recorded in one of my previous videos. So if you look back through my videos, you see one where I'm recording sound effects using a boom mic. And it's actually the slamming door that I recorded. So let's have a look at that. Now when you first go to Audition, open up, but um, go to File and Import. Get in the habit of importing your audio. When you're in waveform mode, there isn't a massive amount of difference between open and import, but you just got to remember that open is opening a project and importing is bringing audio into it. If you open instead of import in multi-track mode, you will end up opening and creating a new project every time instead of just simply bringing your track into an existing project and you'll soon get a right kerfuddle with that one. I basically recorded a few takes. You'll see if I zoom in using this function here, there's a number of them different strengths depending on how close I've got the mic or how hard I slam the door. There's one there, uh, we skedaddle across, there's a much quieter one, barely a slam at all, it's not closing it. There we go, much more uh, sedate. It's a nice in between one, and another one at the end. So what you could do is actually take four different samples from this and start really building up your sample library. These are perfectly good recordings, quite natural sounding, quite good in terms of signal versus noise. Obviously this bit of noise here is me chattering in between, but if you look at it, the um, the noise level is really quite small compared to the signal, so we've got a good start. So look, to truncate, to top and tail, it's made dead easy in Adobe. All you do is select the portion of the region either side that you don't want with your left mouse click, drag to the end, press the delete on the keyboard and get rid of all the stuff you don't want. Can you know, see that I'm actually doing a sort of first stage of this whereby I just get rid of the bulk of it, just get out of the way. It's kind of like doing a rough cut. And now I've honed in on the sample that I actually want. Now it's not done yet. If I were to put this into a sample library and then somebody brought it into a Premiere project or similar, they'd try and line it up with a door slam and they'd have this bit of silence here making it difficult to line up. So what we want to do is to get as tight in as we can to the start of the sample. And you can do it in stages, it's okay. So I'm getting tighter again. Zoom in, you'll see, well actually it's not that tight, there's all that space there. Let's just listen to it. Okay, it's sounding pretty instant already, but I can get tighter again. We don't want to get quite into the main waveform, I'll explain why in a second. Just gonna get rid of that bit. The end isn't quite as important. Back in the day it was, when you were trying to save space on those little floppy disks, you want to squeeze on as much as you can. I'll show an example in a minute. So you can leave the end, but for the sake of neating up, we can get rid of some of this. So, But you want to make sure you capture any resonance, resounding sound. You don't want to cut it from here, you know, and lose part of your sample. So I reckon from around about here onwards, I can safely get rid of. There we are, good. Right, let's go back to the beginning again. And that's tight but there's still one more thing that you should be doing. What we're gonna do is gonna put a little cushion on the front. You know, actually I'm gonna get in tighter again. And over just a couple of milliseconds, I'm gonna to select to that space there. It's literally um, two milliseconds, if that. And I'm going to put a little fade in. See this square on the top left hand side, two shades of gray, that's your fade tool, gives you a linear fade. There's other options. And if you go into the effects, you can do different types of fades. There you go, fade envelope there. But we just need a straight linear fade. I'm going to put one again at the end. I don't need to quite as short at the end. Of this type of sample, I can do it over a longer period of time. I'm not looking for a fade out effect though in this instance, and I'll explain in a moment why. Just pop it in first. Right. The reason why I'm putting these fades in, it just makes it more professional if you're going to pop these into a sound effects library. The fade at the start and at the end, it's essentially cushioning the start and the end. So when you place the process sample into a project and perhaps you start applying other processes like 
compressors, reverbs, delays, um, equalizers, and you've got loads of things all stacked up in a project. What happens if you don't put these cushions in that sometimes you can get this little click sound, which isn't actually from the audio, but it's from everything switching on all of a sudden, like everything coming to life going, whoa. All right, and it happens still with even the latest technology, you get this little click. And you avoid that by putting this cushion so everything eases in over a couple of milliseconds. It doesn't affect the sound. It's happening still incredibly quickly, but just enough cushioning to stop that click. And again, at the end, you don't want any clicks here, and everything just switches off all of a sudden. So that's why we do these little fades. That's now ready for the next stage of processing. I would normalize this next. I'm doing it in that order because I'm making a sample library, and this is quite important. You need to decide, are you going to normalize first or truncate first? Now, if you've recorded a scene in a moving image, so you've perhaps recorded some dialogue, or perhaps you've recorded an ambient wild track, normalize first, all right? Because if you chop that up and then normalize, each section is going to be different levels, and you don't want that. You don't want, like be listening to a nice ambient scene and suddenly the background is going whoop, up and down a level, all right? So always normalize before truncating, unless you're making a sample library, or unless you need to take out a really obvious loud error from your recording before doing your normalizing. So I'm making a sample library here of use of sound effects and therefore I truncate first and then normalize so that all the effects in my sound library are at the same level. So truncating, why this daft word? I mean, we don't exactly go around all day telling people how we're truncating, do we? It's one of those words you only use in this kind of industry. It actually came about from digital samplers from the early 90s, back in the 80s and 90s, where we didn't have this kind of visual platform. You didn't actually see a waveform. You certainly didn't have functionality of just dragging a mouse and like clicking a delete button and getting rid of stuff really quickly. Uh, it was done instead by bits. Now bits are little bits of digital information, which make bits, they're megabytes and gigabytes and terabytes, all right? So you record something into a sampler and then it would lay out in front of you in number form the bits and give you a couple of nodes, a couple of dots, and you'd move these dots up and down the number of bits until you got to the point where the sample started and they'll be going <laughs> and you'd be just before it starts you go, right, that's my first dot, and then you get the uh, the end of your sample and you'd you'd twist things or press buttons until those bits came down until you started from silence saying then back out again and you've got the very end and then you press a truncate button and then the this ancient machine will start whizzing popping whirring away now working and eventually it'll go yep truncated and all you have left is just the sound you want everything else is gone and that was called truncating it's just a slightly different way of looking at the same thing here's an example i'm using an old roland w30 workstation i've had this since i was about 19 years old it's a fantastic piece of kit uh, really low-fi recording, 30 kilohertz recording, and you have to squeeze everything on tiny little floppy disks. So you've got to be very, very um, economic with how much you record on it. But uh, I'm using the same sample here. It's coming through speakers down the mic, so it's not sounding quite as natural. But you can see here that I'm moving the bits up for the start and the bits down for the end. And eventually I press the truncate button. It says, now working. It makes these cranky noises. And then what you finish with is just the little bit of sample left, which frees up the rest of my floppy drive to fill up with other delightful samples. So there we have it, how to truncate in Adobe Audition. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.